Why? Because we have had serial killings in Benue State. Attacks have been incessant and so many scores of fatalities have taken place in Benue State. But the most horrendous, the most offensive, and the most unprovoked was the one that took place on Tuesday, in Balom at St. Ignatius Catholic Church in Gua East. This attack came at a time the morning mass was in session and preparations were being made for a burial ceremony. Twenty people were killed, including two priests, reverend fathers, and one catechist. A place of worship is sacrosanct and need not be violated. This is the most unprecedented attack we have had in Benue State. You have heard about other killings. And these attacks are many. They are incessant. It's almost every week you hear about attacks resulting to death and destruction. When the present one happened, I was in Makodi. I had to hang around to also make a comment the people of Benue State calling for calm. The recent attack could be misinterpreted, particularly by men with mis uh, sinister motive to ensure a destruction of our cohesiveness as a nation and as a people. And I was very happy that the motion received very, very favorable comments. All the senators, kidding, they were worried, and rightly too, that something urgent had to be done, something drastic had to be done to ensure the confidence in our people that government is capable of protecting them. As one of the leaders of Benue, we have invested so much in this democracy. And we want to do everything to ensure the survival of our democracy. There is no system of government that is as beautiful as democracy, no matter its imperfections. And those of you who are journalists know very well that whatever you write, you can go to bed, you can go to sleep, and you can't hear a midnight knock on your door. That's the beauty of it. And so you are partners. And you must also try to project precisely what is happening and not to be sentimental. Do the right thing so that together, we will find solution to this. The killings in Benue started in 2011. 2011. And this government came into power in 2015. These killings have continued. And they would appear to have reached this crescendo on Tuesday with these killings. So this is what actually necessitated what happened on the floor of the Senate today. We have a huge problem of uh, internally displaced persons. It's a huge one. Over 200 people are now involved. And as we prepare 
for the planting se uh, season. It is very important to ensure that these people get back early to their places to start farming activities. I want to believe that those who have perished, generally in the crisis in Benue and elsewhere, have not died in vain. We continue to hope and pray that their blood will usher in a new period of peace, of tranquility, of progress in our Benue state and in our dear country. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. The citizens, uh, the movement will resort to self-help who are moving towards anarchy. I believe strongly that government is capable of handling this situation. And that is why we have very strong recommendations asking the president to intervene very, very forcefully in this case. You are talking about, you cannot compare the number of uh, cows you have in Benue with the number of uh, cows you have in Ikiti. It's a huge colony. If you are able to fly in a helicopter around Benue Tarawa, uh, Nasrawa, you will see what I'm talking about. We're talking about cows in their millions. It's a huge colony. So it's not something that you can do on your own. There are some of these people who have been killed. I was told by the brigade commander, and this will not be the first time, those who were killed, four of those uh, attackers, not in connection with this thing that happened on Tuesday, were not Nigerians. So it's a very, very complicated issue that requires massive attention by the federal government. On our part, yes, we continue to be vigilant. And in my statement, I said we should not take the law into our hands. That shouldn't be the job of the citizen. You see, the issue in America is different. But you can see what free access to uh, guns can do to a society that is so advanced like America. The number of fatalities you have in a, in a, in a day, I would have compute in a year. It spirals every year. They will con they continue to battle with this program. And that is why when people say, defend yourself, you have to carry this, you have to. In the absence of the enemy, you turn it against other people. And even decent men, if it's not taken, they could become armed robbers since they have access to guns. Uh, I'll, just, I'll take two questions at a time. OK, uh, not long ago, your colleague, Sajamari Guacha, uh, did tell his uh, other colleagues that Boko Haram has become herdsmen, and herdsmen have become Boko Haram. So now, this attack, does it make you begin to believe Maragwaja? So he has the training, he has the requisite training to handle matters of uh, security maximally and efficiently. This is not his first tour of this country. He was head of state in 1984. And before that, he was GOC in Jos. And you could see what happened when Chadians invaded some Nigerian territory. He didn't hesitate to flush them out. Against that background, I will always have confidence in his ability to handle the security of our country. People who are appointed to very sensitive and important positions, like security personnel have been a judge fit to hold such positions by their clearance by the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. First of all, we believe there has always been vetting by the executive before their names are forwarded to the Senate for confirmation. Where there are inadequacies, there is always the need to point out to ensure correction 
for maximum uh, performance. That is what I want to say. And I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.